this off. Um, and uh, I hope all of you listening out there, your families and you are doing safe in this time uh, and healthy. Um, I am extremely thankful to Laksha and the uh, you know, tech, Women Tech Makers team for this wonderful privilege, uh, for creating this platform for all of us to uh, connect uh, with all of you amazing folks out there. Listen and learn. And uh, personally, a, a, a huge honor for me to just start this off. Um, my name is Gayatri Velapurkar, and I work for Intuit. I lead the engineering for um, identity platform within Intuit. Um, I have over 20 years of um, uh, experience in shipping code in, so in, in, uh, in this industry. Um, a few weeks ago, when Lakshya and I talked about what should we cover when we discuss the keynote for something like Together We Rise, um, for me, the obvious choice was um, to talk about uh, resilience and compassion. Uh, because to me, this seems, seemed like the right thing to start with. And essentially, uh, you know, where we are talking about individuals growing stronger and together uh, who are caring for each other so that we are all able to rise together being the theme of um, the International Women's Day this year. Um, so fundamentally, uh, when, we, when I look at, uh, you know, who am I? Um, you know, like I said, uh, I, my day job is with Intuit. Um, I am also a very copious daydreamer um, and a mom and a wife, um, techie. Uh, the, the circle I've shown essentially sums up um, all the epiphanies and the learnings I've had in the last 20 years. Um, and what I'm about to sort of go through with all of you is some of my reflections uh, in terms of the different muscles that I have trained over these years um, as I navigated my career. Um, and the themes that I'm touching upon are not are, are you know quite personal, uh, and these are reflections from learn and learnings that I have personally gone through. And also, these are very common questions that I get when I mentor um, you know, junior engineers or even have uh, you know peer discussions around you know how how could I how could we make each other's life better or you know we're stuck there's an obstacle. So typically, the conversations are around these topics. So I thought this would be useful and I hope you find them so. Um, so in the next about 20 minutes, what I'm about to go through is um, just a few key uh, muscle groups that I think we can focus on when we are talking about building resilience. And one of the most important muscles we all need to grow is the, is the one of empathy and compassion. Um, so first off, right, and this is like, when we talk about our careers as a um, as a race, it's not a sprint; it's a marathon, right? So, uh, often asked question is that um, uh, I need to be here, I need to be in a certain position uh, or or a designation, or uh, having accomplished something within a certain age, or when uh, when 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 people have to take a break due to uh, some personal circumstances, they're fretting over the pause, uh, what it is going to do to their careers, why uh, they are not where someone else is. Um, so to that, the muscle you need to essentially focus on is that you are a marathon runner. And if you know marathon runners, they are very regimental and uh, regular about their training. Uh, but at the same time, they're extremely patient about uh, you know the, the run itself. So keep keep, keep training, which essentially means that stay relevant, um, upskill yourself, keep up with innovations, try new things. That's essentially what's going to keep you relevant in a dynamic environment. But set goals for yourself that are in your pace, um, because this is your journey and it's unique to you. At the end of the day, it is about you becoming a better version is what matters. So your goals are your own, your journey is your own. So make sure that you're pacing your goals based on what you can do. And if you're pausing, it's it's okay, it's a pause and you can unpause at some point. But the, the thing, the idea is uh, don't delay growth, which means that don't pause your learning, don't pause your training, because that's incredibly important for you to essentially stay um, relevant. 
and add the that value that you um, want to add in, in your career. Um, when I said try new things, it's essentially to try things that make you uncomfortable. At any point, if you feel that you are um, feeling smug about where you are, then you're probably too comfortable. So make it a point to shift, um, try something new at that point. Being a beginner more than once, uh, very often, in fact, is actually extremely healthy for humility and learning. So um, keep doing that. And again, it's a marathon, so pace yourself. Hydrate and keep going. Um, I, you can't tell by sort of seeing me here because I'm sitting. Uh, but if you met me in person, you would know that I'm a very small person. Uh, and I also have a very soft voice. Um, and, and yet I find myself often in, in large meetings, uh, in conferences, um, in debates, where I have to make a point and I have to say something and I need to be heard uh, because I lose the opportunity if I don't, uh, because I have something to say, as all of you do. So what do you do in such situations? Right? I've been in conferences where you're one amongst about 20 odd people who all have very strong points of view and some of them are louder and are, are endowed with uh, a much more uh, dominating presence than I have. Um, so I think the first step I have found useful is in this is start with a muscle of I am awesome, right? You are going to start uh, and, and the fact that people want me here because they want to hear from me. I think that's the first, uh, th that's the, essentially the first voice that needs to go on in your head. And that essentially uh, drives how the, you want the world to see you, um, which essentially also turns around into, you have to create that point of view, what makes you valuable to participate in that discussion, in that debate, in that change as a change agent or as just a uh, provocative uh, thinker in that particular discussion. Why do you need to be there? So first, put your effort, work hard to make sure that you have the right point of view and you have framed that to be able to present that point of view. Um, secondly, don't let your own self-doubt get in the way of making that point uh, because that's the worst thing you can do to yourself. Um, and, and a more practical advice uh, that I received uh, was one of the uh, very senior leadership uh, women told me this, that, uh, you know, keep standing. Um, and I practice that. I, I you know, literally practice that. So I, if, I, if I'm not heard for once or twice, I, I stand up and I don't sit down till I'm fully heard. So um, that's an extremely effective tool. So you, you are bold, you are awesome, you have a point of view, so go there and make it. Because if you lose the opportunity to make it, it's your own. And so, so don't have excuses for why you couldn't get up and speak or why you couldn't interrupt someone just because they were louder than you. Um, the third uh, muscle essentially is a much broader one. And, uh, uh, this comes from my observation of my own self. So I go through this many times and I've seen this in many others that we sort of oscillate, uh, when we're not in the comfort zone, we are oscillating between two um, states. One is we are victims, we're children that people are depriving us of something or we are martyrs who are giving up something. Um, I think that neither of that is going to help you in your career. Neither of that is, is glor glorified because uh, there is no glory in, in walking away uh, if you want it. And nobody in your career owes you anything. Uh, you are essentially supposed to ask for it, not because you think you deserve it, but because you think you've earned it. So if you think you earned something, be explicit, ask for it be it a job opportunity, a promotion, a new uh, role, or, or an expanded scope. So anything that you think you have earned it and you want to do it, go and ask for it. And uh, oftentimes it is like, maybe you could consider, no, I want this. I think I'm the right person to do this. I want this. So learn to say that. Um, and when you get it, don't, don't try to fill the shoes of who left behind right um i i have taken the i've i've had the um unenvious position of having to take over uh roles leadership roles from from extraordinary leaders 
And what it has done uh, to me is actually undermine me. I would, I would sort of lie there awake, uh, wondering what are all the nice things that a person did? Should I just, you know, even even mimic the way they uh, present themselves in a large group? Um, and and it, you know, essentially copy by you know, calling that an inspiration. Um, that essentially won't help. You are not renting that role. You are owning that role. So own it. In, if you're taking up a new project, if you're a lead designer for a, a, a new uh, platform or a feature, that's yours. You own it. And the only person that you're essentially worried about at that point is you know, your customers whom you're delivering it to and your peers whom you're working with. Right. So don't do it like someone else. Own it as yours and and don't overreach to behave and compensate to behave like someone else in that. Because when you do that, uh, it fails because you get stressed out. And when you're stressed out, you end up behaving like yourself anyway. So don't go through that stress. When you're when you when you get it, you own it like your own and never be afraid to change it. Um, Owning an outcome is what you own. It's not to retain and preserve how it was. So when somebody gives you a job to do and you are now responsible for it, then you are essentially the owner of the outcome. Uh, so you're not, don't be afraid to change it. If you have a point of view that, that needs to be changed for it to have a more effective outcome, please go and change it. Because the biggest disservice that you can do to yourself is to be uncertain that whether that would fail, because you would have, if you, even if you failed, which is, which is very unlikely, because you have a whole system with you going along. So, if you even if you did, um, you fail like you. Uh, so the 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 only thing you need to be clear about is the principles of why you want to change it. Obviously, you can't change it on a whim, but if you have the right reasons to change something to get better outcomes, go ahead and make that change. And, and don't stop because you think it would be um, it would be the wrong thing to do. Uh, tell everyone why you're doing it. Socialize that. Get feedback. But you own the outcome. So you have to take the stand on some of the bold decisions that you want to make. Um, so essentially, this muscle is something that you know you start developing when you are a junior engineer uh, working as a large part of a team uh, all the way up and, and you continue to learn and even today i learned that um, mm -hmm. i've made changes and i've made transformational changes when i took on orgs and uh, the, the initial reaction is, is 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 it's a catastrophe um and nobody likes it because nobody likes change um but you need to understand the incentives and figure out how to take everyone along with you so that when you make this change, you are empowering um, most people uh, who are essentially in the crux of bringing those outcomes. And you're not putting yourself to in, in the front to make it a, a change that affects and makes it comfortable for you. So be very clear on the principles of why you want to change it, but change it anyway. This is a very, very um, easy one to say and an extremely hard one to do. Um, uh, I've like there, there's so much of uh, you know talk around growth mindset, and I think growth mindset is 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 um, is a trap sometimes because once you get into it, you realize that it's it's extremely lonely in that journey of being able to face what you don't know and upskill tech and knowledge we are all extremely comfortable with because you always start from a place of, I don't know this and I'm, I'm getting better, uh, where you essentially will face um, uh, more humility is when you're talking about uh, your personal traits. Um, so first off, start from the place of why, why you're here, why are all of us here? We're all engineers. We're all folks who got to become engineers because we were curious. We wanted to learn how things worked. So continue to nurture that. Continue to nurture that curiosity and don't ever stop wondering why. Um, partner with others who can complement that. 
and also partner with people who are unlike you because they can ask the questions that you haven't been able to. So that's an incredible opportunity to grow because you're not going to see perspectives that you personally are unable to. It's a blind spot for you. So talk to people who are who can bring that to you. So expand to, so, so, like, I think the video also talked about it. Don't hang around with people who are like an echo chamber for your ideas. Hang around with those who are, where there is dissent, there's beautiful stuff that can happen. Peer reviews are extremely important to make things right in software. And peer feedback on a personal front with respect to your behavior is extremely important to help you grow. Um, take criticism very, very seriously. Don't try to avoid going into a downward spiral of making it personal. It is extremely personal. It is extremely hard when you hear truths from somebody where you are, um, where it's your own real nightmare and they're telling about that to you and you want to really fix that. That's hard to do, but you have a choice. You either, if there is truth in it and there is merit in it, you can work on it. If there isn't, just walk away from it. So from growth mindset is essentially trying to identify where you want to be and what will get you there. Which it could be from a, um, a, a new muscle in terms of a soft skill that you're growing or a new tech that you are essentially learning to help you, uh, you know, master your craft to bring better value. So identify that and, and don't fret over the feedback because reverse it to see, okay, that's, that's just somebody telling you what you need to do to get there and not something as a personal insult or a personal uh, critique that you won't want to, um, you don't want to hear. Um, the next series of slides that I'm going to talk about are all through. So what we've spoke about so far is your individual muscle. And what's next essentially is far more harder to grow um, because it actually involves empathy and being kind. Um, and its relevance is, is as you might all heard that we essentially are, all of us are going through mindfulness and, and, and trainings to be empathetic and creating a more nurturing environment around us. It matters because a very viable and thriving environment creates wonderful outcomes. And to create a thriving environment, you really need to be mindful of each other and be able to understand that you are working with people and you need to be inclusive and, and, and get along. Um, and this is not just about getting along, this is also about taking people along. Um, 10 years ago, um, I used to be an a individual contributor. I, was a, I, I used to um, work as an architect and I, I did a lot of um, designs. I love technology and yeah, it was very black and white. Um, something works or it doesn't. Um, but I just hated when I had to collaborate um, because people slow you down. Um, they have points of views, they have opinions, um, they have feelings. And, um, you know, I just, I would, I would get frustrated by that. Um, and I told my uh, then boss, and he was my mentor too, that, you know, I, can you just like make all of this go away? Like this whole process is broken down if I have to review everything with everybody and, and discuss with so many people, it's so inefficient. Um, and I can't get anything done. Um, and uh, he said to me that you think you're in the business of tech, but you are in the business of people. And that stayed with me till date. Uh, and what it means is that if you are able to get, get a, a wonderful team on board your idea, you have multiplied the possibilities of what you can do. So always remember that you are in the business of people and taking people along and bringing in those high performing teams is what, and, and, and bringing that culture of um, debates and reviews and, um, and a healthy um, uh, helping out uh, will essentially take us much further than we can go alone. Um, people say dogs and children can tell when you are faking it. Um, you can't fake interest with either one of them. So what does being genuine mean, right? What does being genuine mean? You, I, I often get this question that, 
hey, if I meet a leader in an elevator, how can I impress them? What is the one thing I can ask them? Um, how do I make an impression? Um, it's, it's very simple and at the same time, it's extremely hard because you can't fake that interest. Uh, you have to have taken interest in the first place. Um, if you're meeting a leader, if you're meeting a, a team member, or you're meeting a partner that uh, you're working very closely with um, anywhere, uh, I think start to strike a conversation, actually show interest in what they are doing, show interest in what they want to do and how you can help them. Um, ask your boss or your boss's boss that what's top of mind for them, where you can be of help to them and how you can make them successful. Um, it's it's a lonely journey for all of us most of the time. So such reaching out is it's, it's incredibly powerful and it's also something that nobody would forget. So be genuine and be genuinely interested in a person and therefore what they are doing and that would essentially make that impact and an influence. So that would essentially help you connect with them, not, not now, but it would essentially turn into a lasting relationship. Um, and of course, be inclusive. Uh, practice being inclusive when you're in every meeting. Be thoughtful about what you're saying and also give opportunities to people who are in the room. Like you heard me say initially that, you know, I have a soft voice and I always worry whether people will hear me. And I love meetings where the moderator of the meeting is making sure, or the host of the meeting is making sure that everybody's point is heard um, and not just a few of them are speaking at all times. Uh, hear from the quiet ones, hear from those who are not saying yes to your point of view um, and give a chance for everybody to speak and, and open up to you. Be it, um, be it the most junior intern who's joined your company or um, you know, your SVP or your CTO whom you're trying to impress. I think the, the, the magic there is the same. You have to be interested, you have to be curious and you have to be able to make them feel like you want to um, you want to help them. I think that's essentially the one way you can surely get through. Um, uh, often often we go through this um, where we are always fretting that somebody is out to get you. You get a bad email. Um, you get an email which is telling you to, um, hey, I need this by this time and this date and you're responsible for it. Um, or you're asking for something and somebody says, no, I have no time to do that. Um, and you think the universe is plotting against me, right? And I am the most important person and everybody is just out to get me. Um, always remember that you are the center of just your universe. And by that definition, you're the center of nobody else's universe. Uh, everybody has their own center of which they are fitting in, uh, which essentially translates to everybody has constraints and everybody has incentives. Um, you need to understand constraints and incentives. And if you understand both of, both of them, you're essentially able to strike a good relationship and a partnership with someone. Um, I've, I've done that so many times that when someone writes a nasty email, I'm, I'm itching to write back a nasty email um, because they're out to get me and I am the most important person for me, uh, but no, you were probably one in 100 people who reached out to them and they they were having a bad day. So, um, or it's not just their incentive to do it, it's not their priority to do it and they're not going to do it. Um, so understand where that no comes from and also understand that it's you're not important to them, you're important to you. Um, so start with that empathy and start with, with unpacking incentives. Um, breathe, be mindful. Um, I went to a mindfulness training. They talked about there is a moment between uh, an action and a reaction, and you can stretch that moment. Uh, you get an you get an angry slack. You respond with an angry slack. Um, you get an angry slack before a meeting. It's even worse because you drag the entire meeting, make it about that slack you received when it had nothing to do with the meeting at all. Um, so breathe. It's not about reacting. It's about thoughtfully responding. It's very similar to your, it's very related to the center of the universe um, analogy. Uh, you have to understand that it comes from a place of 
some constraint or incentive that you have not understood yet. So always pause and respond and spread that joy to everybody else. Put the phone and walk away if you have to. Um, we have this culture of responding all the time, right? I get something, I would get a question at 11.30 at night and I'm itching to respond. Uh, and I have to really hold myself back and I have to really say, that's a downtime, don't do that because you're gonna upset somebody and that's just going to go downhill. So remember that every time you're triggered to respond. And when people are responding to you with that trigger, you realize that you have probably triggered them. So have that conversation, pick up the phone, have that, have that after taking a deep breath, have that conversation. It will make it better for both of you. Finally, um, none of us succeed because of our genius. Um, we want to think it that way, but none of us do. Uh, it's because of a lot of people. It takes a village to, to get something done. Um, I, I learned it from one leader uh, uh, very recently, and uh, this was a launch party. You know, we're launching something, you know, phenomenal that they uh, that was uh, that was a groundbreaking um, effort. And uh, the leader spent about 20 minutes uh, giving credit to everyone uh, but his team, everyone else who propped his team up to essentially bring that about, to bring that whole um, launch about. Uh, it, was, it was incredible uh, because you always start with, oh, my team and my team. And, and essentially what you're saying is it's all me and, and, and all of us, right? But there are so many people who help you. So remember, remember to give and share credit, acknowledge it and share your spotlight. And when you do that and then give thanks, it goes a long way because what you've created and what that leader created is incredibly strong relationships with all the folks who helped out so that they would be motivated and they would be incentivized to help again. So say thanks and give thanks to others. And that's one of the most incredible things that you would be doing for them. And it always feels good to be spotlighted. So give that spotlight to somebody and give it often, give it more generously. It's not a zero sum game. You will get the spotlight as much as they do. But, but when you do that, you have created a, an, an unspoken bond or, an, or rather an unbroken bond that will last um, for, for, for a long time. Uh, so I know I'm probably out of time, but um, I've tried to say a lot of things in a short while, and I hope you were able to get some of that. The crux being, um, you know, we're all here because we want to do something. We're all here because we have vivid imaginations that we want to bring to life. And, and, I, and, and my learning is everything uh, you can imagine can become real. And this is two of my favorite quotes from my, one, from my, my favorite book and author. Um, and, and essentially summarizes what I believe is that we are, we are powerful in, in who we are, we're awesome and we've got here and we all have the ability to, to realize um, every dream that we chase. And uh, we're not, this is not a jungle gym. A career is not a jungle gym. It's not an obstacle course. Uh, our journeys are all unique and uh, we're all here to enable each other. So let's all grow resiliently as individuals, but at the same time, always remember to be kind to yourself and to others. So uh, with that, I hope you got uh, uh, some value out of this and stay strong and be compassionate. Thank you. Over to you, Laksha.